Welcome to the Album-Oriented Dungeons tutorial on using the Ace Attorney casing tool. Uh, this is a neat little program that allows you to create your own Ace Attorney style games. Um, just in a little Windows interface here. And I'm going to show you how to add in assets and then put together a sample script to um, learn how to string together the various commands. There is an online dictionary on all the various commands you can use here. Um, but there's not as much information on what you can do with these, how to use them together. So this is going to be a series of videos on putting the commands together into creating an actual game and narrative that you can interact with and experience. We're going to begin by loading in a couple characters. The sample scene we're going to do is just a really simple one. We're going to speak with um, Maya in the defense court lobby. Um, so this will just be a dialogue between Phoenix Wright and his assistant, Maya Faye. So we're going to need to start by loading in Maya because she's the one we're talking to who we're seeing in the defense lobby. So in here, I've already created a new project. I've just named it tutorial, as you can see up here. On the character tab, we're just going to click on the new character button. When you're loading in a character, there are a handful of things that you can, you can set for the character. One is the voice blips. You can have custom blips in here. Um, if you have a separate file or you can just choose the tone for the uh, the male characters or the tone for the female characters, just a higher or lower tone. Um, you also need a couple other things. You need to have the profile image that appears in kind of the court record area and you'll um, get you'll need the you'll need gifs to use as the emotes. So we're creating Maya here for this example. So we're going to start by loading in Maya's profile picture. So you click in this space. You'll navigate to where you have the profile picture saved. Find her in my tutorial folder. There we go. And then we have the example text that will show in the list in the court record, um, just when you're cursoring over the uh, profile here. So we're gonna spell her name, Maya Faye, and a short description of who the character is. This varies uh, based on which game you're in, so we'll do a, a short description here. And the name as shown in the editor itself. This is also going to be how you're going to refer to the character in the command lines. Um, so while you may appreciate the specificity and precision of having the character's full name spelled out, as you repeatedly create command lines for load character and display text, it may be obtuse if you're going to spell out the entire character, the, the character's entire name every time you're going to reference them. So I'm just going to refer to this character as Maya within the editor itself. Then we'll click the new emote button. And here we're going to have three different animations for each emote. You've got pre-animation, the talking, and the idle. Pre-animation is a GIF that will load at the beginning, and then you will not see this animation again. Um, a good example, if you're familiar with it, is when Mr. Hat appears um, with Trucy. That whole animation as Mr. Hat folds out and takes off Trucy's hat. That is the pre-animation. It plays, you see it happen, and it, then it does not happen again. The talking animation, that's got the lip flaps. You see the character talking. And the idle, generally, is just kind of a blinking GIF. Uh, this casing tool software knows when to switch between the idle and the talking gifts, which is super useful, but we'll want to go ahead and load in all of these. We're also going to name the emote. So this is just going to be, I'm just going to make this Maya's normal talking emote. So I'm going to refer to it as normal. And you can see here in the preview, um, if you can kind of look real closely in here, you can see Maya's eyes blinking in idle and her mouth moving and talking. We'll hit save here. So now we have the orange stripe here for the emote listing. We've just got the orange stripe until we point at it, at which point it will display all of the gifts we've loaded into the emote. This is the only emote we're going to add into Maya's character, so now we're going to hit the save button. The next thing we're going to do is we need to create another emote that is going to display Maya. The reason we're doing this is if you play the Ace Attorney games, you're familiar um, during the out of court segments, Phoenix or Apollo, whoever you're playing as, this point of view character. The camera is the point of view of the character. So we never see Phoenix or Apollo or whoever the other main characters are during these segments. We see the character they are speaking to. Since the way the commands work here, and we want the correct um, uh, speaking blips for the character, the way I'm going to handle this is I'm going to create a new character that is Phoenix when he is speaking to Maya. I'm going to click the new character button. The name here is 
Phoenix. We're going to leave it at that. I don't want to spell out the entire name every time I'm writing the command. I'm going to mark this as hidden so it will not appear to the player. And we're going to add an emote. Actually, I'm going to handle this as I'm going to have just the um, the one character. So this is Phoenix Wright uh, talking in case one. And the way I would go about this is I would have this character of Phoenix Wright store all the animations that he's uh, animations of the people he's talking to in the first case, and then a separate character with the people he's talking to in the second case, and so on and so forth. So we're going to add a new emote. The emote's name is. Um, talk to Maya. Now, in this case, we're, we're not actually watching Maya talk. The way this tool works is while text is scrolling, it is going to play the GIF loaded into the talking slot here. So since we are talking to Maya, we need to load her idle sprite into the talking slot here. So we've loaded Maya's idle sprite, or normal idle sprite, into the talking GIF. So while this Phoenix character is delivering text, we will see the idle sprite or Maya. Now, with the assistant characters, you might want to create a separate emote based on their different reactions. For example, there are cases where Maya or Trucy has a surprised reaction, or maybe kind of a stern reaction or a sad reaction while uh, Apollo or Phoenix talks to them. In which case, we'd want to load in a separate emote uh, that is the, the idle GIF of the appropriate reaction for the assistant while the POV character is speaking. Uh, we're also going to need to load in the same GIF as the idle animation, so that when text is not scrolling, we actually do still have a sprite display. So now we have uh, the, the idle sprite in both the idle slot and the talking slot for this character that we will load into the game and onto the scene when Phoenix is talking to Maya. We'll save here. We're going to mark this as male because Phoenix is talking, so we want those low voice blips. But he's talking to Maya, so that's why we're using Maya's sprite rather than Nick's sprite. All right, so now we've saved this. I did have to load in a, a thumbnail, the profile thumbnail, for Phoenix talking to Maya. But now we have two characters. We have uh, Maya herself for when she's talking, and we have a character for Phoenix talking to Maya. Next thing we need to do is load in a location. Uh, these are the backgrounds that appear behind the characters in the program. So we go to the Locations tab, we click the Location, we're going to name this, and this, in my example I'm using the Court Lobby. Now we're going to go load up this background image. So I have now the Defense Lobby here loaded in, we'll hit Save, and that's all we really need to do for the location, it's just a static background that appears here. Now we're going to hit the Save button to save the project, make sure we have all of our assets here. Right now we are just using characters and locations, uh, we'll get into music and sounds down the road. But from here, now we are ready to open up the code editor with the Snifty button right here. So now we have our code window. Um, we're going to, we start in an unnamed script. So we're going to want to switch over to this preloaded script, the prelude.aacs. Uh, the way this application is set up, every game will need this prelude script. Um, because we're just making a single scene, not going to get into the nitty gritty of how to use this and interact with other scripts. We're just going to throw everything in here. And this is the first script that runs when you launch the application. All right, so here I've written out a handful of commands in the prelude script. So we've got a couple of different things going on in here, but I've kept it relatively simple. Uh, the first one here, uh, we are starting the scene. So we're going to fade in the background and load the scene. If you played Ace Attorney games, um, a common way that we, we have some of these establishing shots is to load in the background on its own and then load in the character separately. So that's what I've done here. Before I go into all the rest of what this does, I'm going to fire off the quick test. So you'll see the performance and you can kind of understand and keep that in the back of your head while I go through these different commands. So we begin by loading in the blank court lobby scene. Now, the fade in commands need to appear before the load scene commands. Otherwise, they don't they don't mount correctly. The fade in commands, which you can fade in a background or a character, have this number here, which refers to how, uh, how many milliseconds it takes to fade in. Um, I prefer 
uh, a about 1500 milliseconds for backgrounds and about 2000 for characters. The default is 1000. Obviously there's no kind of set in stone rule here. It's whatever you think works best for your situation. Um, there are a lot of variables you can put into the load scene, and this is going to be maybe one of the um, biggest commands you're going to use or get the most mileage out of. Um, every time you want to change the characters, you're going to use a load scene command. Um, so every time someone else is talking, you're going to use load scene. Every time someone's got a new emote, you're going to use load scene. But we begin by fading in the background 1500 milliseconds, then we're load, we tell it to load the scene court lobby. Um, since I've only specified court lobby here, it's going to load in just the background and nothing more. I then have the pause command with the same uh, counter as the fade in background. What this does is it tells the program to wait for whatever this time span is before processing the next instruction. I've set these to match so we just get the load in and it's fully loaded in before the next thing happens. So the background fully loads in before we start fading in the character. So we fade in the background court lobby, we wait for that to finish, and then we fade in the character and load the scene court lobby so we keep the same background and we load in Maya's normal emote. So the structure here is the location, the character, and the emote. The false false here, that refers to um, some stuff with pre-roll pre or pre-animation emotes, um, whether or not you play them or you, or you wait for them to complete, that kind of stuff. Again, we wait for the full fade in to complete, and then we go to display text, another one you'll be getting a whole lot of mileage out of. So you get display text. This right here fills in the name of the text or the name of the character on the text box. This does not determine who is speaking. The character loaded in the scene is always the one speaking. So this is why we we have the two separate characters. We have uh, Maya when she's talking and then we have Maya when Phoenix is talking to her so we can get those different voice blips. So the text box is going to say Maya. We could have it say Maya Fey if we wanted to. I didn't specify that. And then we have the actual text that is being read over the dialogue. Uh, the falses here refer to some more variables, which we're not really touching on in this video. We'll get to those later. One thing to note about text um, is that you cannot use semicolons in the text, even though we've got the quotes here, even though this is just being uh, text that is just being displayed on screen. If you put a semicolon in here, it will not run. We then go to the break line. You'll be using this a whole lot this forces the player to acknowledge whatever's on screen. It's hitting that next button on the touch screen. Um, so if you don't have this, if you have two back-to-back -back display text command lines, as soon as the first line finishes, the next one will begin scrolling, without really any time to process. There are cases when this is used. For example, uh, Wendy Oldbag, when she begins rambling, there's no point at which uh, those games prompt you to hit next on the text box because that part of the script isn't really intended to be read closely. It's intended to be just kind of flown past the audience. But for most text, you want to have the acknowledge button here so that your audience has a minute to read, get caught up, think about, oh, that's a weird way to say that if they want to. So after we hit OK on the text box where Maya says, this sure is a strange case, Nick, then we load the next scene, which is not really a separate scene. I'm just now loading Phoenix's character when he is talking to Maya. So we don't get those lip flaps because I loaded in the idle animation for this character's talking emo. Phoenix this then says this statement. Now I've got this backslash NL in here. That is a new line. So he says, you can say that again. And then the next line down says, I hope we found enough evidence rather than continuing on the same line. Kind of like a paragraph break here. I find this useful, others may not. Um, it does not go into a new text box. Um, it, if at points you want to, if you have a long statement that needs to be a couple of different boxes that you have to acknowledge in between each text box, that needs to be its own display text line. If you have a whole big monologue in one display text line, it will keep scrolling and drawing text lines outside of the text box and you just will not see those. So you have to be conscious of how long the text you have is and how much of it is going to fit into a single box at once. Using the backslash new line is going to remove some space there, but for formatting reasons, it may be desirable. We then have another break. We have to acknowledge the text box we just saw, and then I load Maya back in. 
under her normal emote. So now Maya's talking. We have the display text. The text box is labeled Maya, and she has her line here. I have the but dot dot dot. We have a break. We have to acknowledge this, and then she goes on to the next box she has. Now, you may have noticed during the test, this line did not fill up the text box, but I still wanted the break there to acknowledge this first statement, the evidence of the restaurant receipt and the footprints, before moving on to now we have to process these other pieces of evidence, the clown nose and the parachute, and the idea that the judge may not really like these. So separate ideas are going to function better on different text boxes, even if you could reasonably fit them on a single screen. So now that we've gone over kind of these commands, we're going to run through the test one more time and you can see it all together. One more thing to note while we're in here is we do have this court record button. This opens up a separate panel where you can see all the evidence and profiles listed. Now I didn't load in any evidence for this little tutorial, but we can switch over to profiles and we'll see now Maya listed. So we can mouse over Maya and we have a little description of her down here. Switch back to evidence or collapse this all together. So that is this original tutorial. Um, here we have the fade in background, fade in character, load scene, display text, pause and break commands. Um, just with these couple of commands, you can do a whole lot creating little scenes here, as long as you have the backgrounds and character emotes loaded in. Um, if you just wanted to create more of a straight ahead visual novel without as much of the interactive elements, this is pretty much all you really need. Just the emotes, the load in scenes, backgrounds, display text, and you're pretty much good to go. You don't have to go any deeper than you really want to. Um, this platform does have a kind of dictionary on the website so you can go in and look up all the various different commands um, and i'm creating this video series because there's not as much information on how to string these together and use the commands together to create a whole experience so with these couple commands you can do a whole lot just to create uh, scenes of dialogue as i dive further into this platform i'll create further videos on what to do with the other commands and how to use various other components of this platform but for now thank you for watching uh, this has been Album Oriented Dungeons, and I will see you on the next video.